here we have uh, ability to cost simulate uh, 3D model of uh, Tokamak uh, fusion nuclear reactor experimental with the CATIA magic SML in the loop for multiple use cases. So one is that uh, we can uh, demonstrate during design review capabilities of this reactor servicing robotic arm as you can see here we have servicing robotic arm with the eight degrees of freedom another one that we can do model based testing we can run simulations and check requirements which are transparently configurable actually going from the constraints in the SML directly from those requirements as you can see here on each joint there are limitations and uh, also, we can get uh, requirements verification based on the geometry and other characteristics of the model back when we are running uh, this model in co-simulation mode. So now uh, we are running from SysML, let's say. We are running different scenarios and we're getting back results of simulation from the geometry like collision detection and other things. So here we will run our simulation with UI. This is, uh, as you can see, nice UI with some um, color change for each joint. We have separate uh, uh, slider and uh, we can track requirements verification over time when we run the simulation. We can run here. So we can see the simulation is running, but uh, here this model does not execute. Why is not executing? Because we never started the simulation so let's start here go here and run simulation once the simulation is running it will start reacting to the simulation sent from here and you can see here that even there was no model running at the initial time once the simulation started on the 3D model side, uh, it immediately starts reacting. So here we have this mo this arm running, uh, joint one, and the requirements verification we can track uh, over time. And we can run multiple joints at the same time. So here we have another one. Can stop this one. You see here now we have this one running. It's a really big model. And here we have ability to run another one. See now it's two joints running, three joints running. This one is actually extending this arm. Another one extending this arm again. We can stop those. Stop this one, stop this one, stop this one. And you see here we have requirements verification. At all times we see which requirements were failing. Right? I can zoom in. And I can control, you know, not only automatically but also manually here. I can move to any any position. Yeah. Can move again those joints. See the limitations. Again, run multiple joints at once. Let's see all of them running around at once. You see here. And uh, once I'm ready, I can stop simulation. I get results into the model. Everything is completely transparent here. So here we get results into the model. That's the last. Uh, instance of the model i can go to the requirements table say show me the last simulation snapshot here and here i get that snapshot based on that last simulation here you see what was the during the uh, final execution time what was the value what was the margin what was the bound bound again comes from the requirements here you see we track this requirement between the the limitations uh, and uh, where did we got those those parameters? All those parameters came from actually system uh, model in 3D CAD, right? So this 3D CAD model, uh, this specifically robotic arm. We can actually stop the simulation now. It could run, you know, but we want to see more things here. 
uh, has the limitations where it can go and we transfer that from the cat to the SysML and then enable cost simulation. So now let's take a look uh, how this model can be overviewed. We can actually go back to the full reactor. You see, we don't even see that robotic arm which runs in the vacuum side of this reactor. We can also go to just to robotic arm snapshot here. And we could simulate this whole uh, robotic arm just here. So let's try to do that. Let's go here. Let's uh, switch to the simulation mode. Uh, let's uh, actually simulation mode here. Let's switch to this robotic arm. And then let's go here. And then we will talk about this integration itself. So we are running. Just a second, we see here this time is uh, running. We can suppress those two. And now if we'll run this model, we are now able to control this gesture arm. See, it moves, we can automate movement. So it goes 180 degrees here. Here we have uh, again 180 degrees because it goes bi-directional right. Uh, here we have again 180 degrees. Here is different situation because now it is actually extending and collapsing the arm, right? So this is like millimeters and in this case is degrees. Those are units in degrees. again uh, in degrees and here we have those requirements let's see two different requirements and then with the units are not satisfied okay so now uh, how this integration is made it is actually based on configurable communication fmu one part of that fmu is here where we send the inputs which controls this robotic arm and another side of this communication FMU is here it is added here where we receive the input so it is added through right click on this node here uh, here we can see associate FMU and once we associate FMU we can select here right click um, and then uh, provide the map mapping so we have here mapping you see between uh, this uh, parameterized cat and this actually between this parameterized cat of this uh, robotic arm and this FMU here we can have uh, uh, one another direction you know because this FMU has bi-directional so bi-directional communication based on each interface uh, sites go back to the full model or maybe just this one here so here we have 3d cat which is created with katia and we are using delmia robotic simulation application robot virtual commissioning which is using this cat to run the simulation and simulation is running uh, with katia magic in the loop katia magic cameo in the loop in order to enable design review in order to enable requirements verification and in order to enable geometry based robotic simulation based uh, verification and we can run through the scenarios in the SML model and get results this integration allows us bi-directional sim simulation so we could run programs here directly in robotic simulation for example here we have one program i could run it uh, and then we would see that it's actually executing by itself without Katia magic. So then we would get back results uh, from this execution. You see here, it is running directly executed here in this robotic simulation application, not driven by SysML. So we can get back results and then those results could say like, okay, we ran through those scenarios that was um, correctly executed. Um, they were supported. Uh, what's the value of this integration is that we have tight uh, co-simulation based traceability 
without uh, using API. We are using FMU as interface. Again, two parts of communication FMU, which we uh, you can check another video how to make it. You can make uh, we just made you know in a couple of minutes with uh, eight uh, uh, ports to communicate. You can make any of the, those FMUs with Dimola. Another value that you don't run simulations in single environment, so you don't need to uh, uh, overwhelm the simulation with processing, uh, you know, needs. Uh, as you can see here, the simulation runs as easy together with SysML simulation as easy without SysML simulation, right? There is no increase of processing needs because just parameters are simulated. Another value is that this actual robotic simulation application is can manage uh, heavy you know load on the you see the scad is like multiple multiple parts and simulation is using eight degrees of freedom at the same time running without the problems and the integration can impl be implemented in uh, let's say hours but you know once you did that once you know you can add you know new fmu in minutes without uh, uh, like from zero, uh, from a parameterized CAD to the FMU in the minutes and enable the co simulation. Okay, thank you for. And to what what's the interface is used? Actually, here we, we have uh, uh, schematics of this interface, uh, diagram of this interface. We are using communication with FMU, where we use. Um, two applications which are Delmia and Katia Magic. They both support FMU, but we add not a package model of FMU, but we add communication interface which enables us to communicate through FMU. And that's how we can uh, enable this simulation in white box way, transparently communicating. Uh, what are the uh, media possible for the communications? MQTT, TCPIP, uh, LCM, UTP. We are using QTP here, which is very fast in our case. Serial can, shared memory. I guess shared memory would be also very fast. Uh, there could be also other like uh, hardware, you know, and uh, other uh, connectors uh, available. In this library, this library is open source library. You you, you need Daimola. In our case, we are using Daimola, of 3D experience pattern behavior modeling to generate those FMUs, so those communication to FMUs, which uh, enables the communication side. Uh, here again, when we execute, we have this uh, FMU where we input values here and then re received values on another side. Uh, we can sh see how that would work, you know. For example, if I would take here, I'm using uh, this uh, no magic in FMU here in this case. Now, if I will take another FMU, attach it, click OK. Okay, is that another FMU which is used now previously in Del Delmia for the CAD simulation? If I will connect it and run this simulation UI. So now it does not go to the Delmia, but uh, I can switch off this UI. But what happens now, if I'm changing in this FMU the top one inputs, let's say one, two, three here, on the bottom one I get input, you see, based on the network communication. So if I change here, say here, 999, I get here property 9. And opposite direction, if I will change on this FMU, those inputs, like say 555 here, it's received on that side. So it's bi-directional communication between those FMUs ensured by the way how they are generated. Uh, what else uh, I can uh, do? Import of that FMU. What else? Uh, all the logic of simulation is also transparent. Uh, if I will go here and say, for example, run this web-based uh, interface here, for example, I can switch to the web-based interface run, and I see how those, uh, uh, you see controllers control the inputs to the, to the ports, and I see the values flowing, so I can 
let's minimize here make the change you see and the input goes here that input uh, affects the simulation so the change you see it jumped you know the different position I need to restart the simulation because it was running through between those FMUs. Let's start again. Okay, go. It's running now. So, see, it's moving. Can zoom in. It's changing here. I see the values. Everything transparent. If I write uh, now stop and then go to again to those config and I will change from the silent mode which I was running in the silent mode false to the transparent mode I can see how that is simulated in SysML you see we are running uh, each joint through the activity diagram and here let's say joint 3 gets uh, inputs let me send that input to the joint 3 it waits to exit until it reaches the value it goes to the cycle when there reaches one one side of the possible uh, uh, limit it based on the decision node transitions to the next uh, which the next uh, opaque action which is uh, updating again you know step by step uh, coordinates in order to come back you know that's how, what ensures the smooth movement and if I send, you know, for example, to join three signal again, so this destroys this activity and we see it gets back to the waiting mode. And that's how I can switch on, you know, for example, joint one, joint two, and they can run at the same time together. Joint three, then I can stop joint one, joint two. Everything is very transparent. That's how all the simulation even analysis are created in SysML and then later we can automate them. As you saw, I switch off the animation which allows me to run them really fast without seeing what's happening, but the debugging was done here directly. Very simple, very flexible. Yeah, if I will go back, double click. Uh, if I go here to silent, true, close and run the silent mode. I can see here chart of the properties and I can simulate. And I see requirements was not satisfied at this moment. Okay, thank you. Let me know what questions you have.